I have seen lots of movies and shows in my life and hence came across lots of different characters and as a result came across lots of great villains but I never imagined that one of the most terrifying and most disturbing villain that I will ever watch on the screen will be from an anime Johan Liebert a psychopath from the critically acclaimed anime named Monster is one of the most terrifying villains I have ever seen in any medium of storytelling on the screen his character is shown as the personification of pure evil and the dark gloomy and eerie atmosphere of the show further elevates this feeling like an overwhelming crescendo the character portrayal of johan liebert was not just one of the most terrifying characters of all time for me but it was also one of the most complex and psychologically heavy character i have ever seen not just this particular character but the whole show itself is a very heavy dose of psychology and philosophy so just a little disclaimer to the viewers that if you are planning to watch this 74 episode thriller a masterpiece it is not for everyone it is one of the rare shows in the world whose true explanation of the plot characters setup and climax is still a widespread debate across the different internet platforms because of its extremely intricate portrayal of the multilayered human emotions and nature we all possess in many different forms but in this video i will mainly focus on analyzing the complex mind and actions of johan liebert throughout the story and the show's eerie and bizarre ending The story is presented to us in a non-linear suspense thriller fashion and this was extremely important for the complex plot of this story as non-linear storytelling makes the viewers to invest themselves in the story allowing the writer to make his audience understand what exactly he wanted to convey. The 74 episode long story of Monster is like a 74 piece of puzzle and hence to understand Johan Liebert we must approach the story and its timeline linearly from the start till the end once we are done with the show. To understand Johan and the complete story of this anime, you must keep three very important points in mind. First, Johan is an extremely disturbed psychopath, and we will discuss why he is like that. Second, most of his actions in the story revolve around or have to do something related to his sister Nina or Anna. And third, the three major themes of the show are identity, love, and nihilism. As we will discuss the show deeply, we will realize how beautifully Naoki Urasawa, the author of this complex mass the piece intertwines these three important themes together and shows us how they are interrelated to each other not just in this story but also in our real lives the story starts with the eugenics experiment which was conducted by Franz Bonaparte Peter Chapek and 42 other supervisors to create a genetically superior race for the country of Czechoslovakia the parents of these to be born children were selected from a list of people who were tall beautiful healthy and intelligent generally people who were genetically superior Johan and Nina's parents were among these subjects. Johan's biological father was also the brother of Franz Bonaparte. When Johan's mother and father decided to escape the government and the experiment, then his father was killed by Bonaparte and his mother was abducted and kept in a tavern in the city of Prague in Czechoslovakia. At this time, Johan's mother was pregnant with him and his sister Nina. She gave birth to the twins in this tavern where they were supposed to live for the first 6 years of their life, completely cut off from the external world. World. They are not given any names and identity to make their minds malleable for the researchers. This trauma of ripping off the identity was one of the earliest causes for the twisted mind and disturbed character of Johan. Identity is one of the major themes of the story of Monster. Having an identity or a name is one of the most basic characteristics of a human being as humans are social creatures and identity provides a person with the sense of belonging to a society. We define ourselves all our lives by starting with our name. Ripping off someone from their name or basic identity may push that person to anti-social characteristics resulting in psychopathic traits. But this was just one of the many traumas that Johan and his sister faced until now. We can also notice that Johan was always dressed as his sister when they were little kids as their mother wanted to make people around the tavern believe that there was only a single daughter with her and she was hiding away from the researchers and Franz Bonaparte. Not having any sort of identity may have forced Johan to impose the the identity of his sister on himself from the very beginning of his life therefore this incident played a very significant role in the later parts of the plot which we will discuss soon in the video one of the most significant and brutal trauma that ever happened to johan when was the kid's turn 6 years old the incident is discussed in the ending climax scene where johan recalls this memory to tenma when franz bonaparte returns to the mother he executes a trick from the experiment to divert the kids even from the basic love of a mother he 
gives the mother a choice to choose any one of her kids and hand him or her over to them for further experiments. Both the kids, scared of the outcome, cling to their mother's hands. The mother first chooses Johan to hand him over to the superiors, but then changes her mind at the last instant and hands Nina over to the superiors. This incident completely breaks down Johan's sense of any belonging towards his mother, as he is seen saying to Tenma that was she protecting him over Nina or was she confused between both the twins. Which one of the children was the unwanted one for the mother? At this moment, Johan also realizes the truth of inequality in this world. How not all the lives are equal and only death is the most natural event when all the living beings finally become equal. Though this incident might not look very significant superficially, but if you try to understand this small incident, you will know the true gravity of this trauma. For every child in this world, a mother's love is the most important part of his or her life. No matter if anyone loves us or not but we all know that a mother will always love her child unconditionally and will always protect her child with her life no matter what. A mother's death at a young age for a child is one of the most painful experiences one can ever imagine. But what is even more painful and horrifying for a child is knowing that his or her mother doesn't even love them. This is the experiment Bonaparte was trying to pull off at this particular moment. He wanted to create the abysmal void in the minds of the twins by making making the twins doubt even their mother's love. The mother loved both the twins, there is no doubt about it. But still Bonaparte successfully installed this doubt in the minds of the twins with his cruel experiment. It is also this moment when Johan felt extremely guilty for the choice of Nina over himself, as he was disguised as Nina at that point in time which resulted in the confusion. Hence this was one of the many and the most horrifying trauma for Johan at a very young age, ripping off every sense of belonging in the world from his entire existence, making him the insensitive and unsympathetic cold-blooded monster. This lack of empathy in him is what we see in the story as his horrid cynical actions and murders without any remorse, treating the lives of other human beings as nothing more than garbage just for his dark plans. He never had a shed of empathy for any living being in his life apart from his sister. It was this moment when the monster inside him started to grow to the point of no return. This incident therefore discusses the second major theme of the story which is love. How important love is for a child to nurture him or her into a responsible and loving human being for the society. How lack of love in the early life of a child can shape their innocent malleable minds into the minds of a hideous monster. After this incident, Nina is taken away by Franz Bonaparte and Peter Chapek to the Red Rose Mansion where she is locked inside a completely dark room for a long time, only been provided with food and water to remain alive. When she is freed from the incarceration, she witnesses one of the most horrifying incidents in the mansion one could ever imagine. The massacre of 46 people by Franz Bonaparte in the Maria Theresa Hall. Franz Bonaparte had fallen in love with the twin's mother and hence cared for her children. Therefore, he killed everyone involved with the project to let Nina escape and save her from becoming the monster she was chosen as a part of the experiment. Nina or Anna, after returning back to the three frogs, told Johan about the atrocities and experiments that happened on her in the Red Rose Mansion and the horrifying massacre she witnessed over there. Johan, who deeply cares for his sister, feels even more guilty because of what she had to suffer because of the choice of their mother. Up until this point in his life, Johan develops this sense of extreme darkness towards this world because of being treated as animals and subjects of experiments by everyone they have ever met. Both of them ran away from their home to hide from the authorities. The extreme nihilism towards the world or metaphorically the monster inside Johan was growing incessantly because of the idea that everything in this world was uncompassionate and this very disturbing idea became the normal or say extreme reality for Johan. This brings us to the third major theme of the show which is nihilism. But what exactly is nihilism? Let's understand it with a simple definition. Nihilism is the belief that all values are baseless and that nothing can be known or communicated. It is often associated with extreme pessimism and a radical skepticism that condemns existence. A true nihilist would believe in nothing, have no loyalties and no purpose other than perhaps an impulse to destroy. Even Friedrich Nietzsche, one of the most renowned modern age philosopher and a well-known nihilist, says that nihilism's corrosive effects would eventually destroy all moral, religious and metaphysical convictions and precipitate the greatest crisis in human history. The nihilism inside Johan 
one finally made him the monster he was always meant to be by the superiors of the experiment the sense of recognizing every adult as a harmful being for him and his sister combined with his nihilistic thoughts made johan commit his first murder of the couple they met after running away from the authorities after committing the first murder johan again sets out on the journey with his sister to leave the country but since they are little kids they get severely exhausted from the lack of food and water and finally both of them collapse at the border of Czechoslovakia and East Germany this is the time where johan for the very first time in his life sees the scenery of the doomsday a period of time when every living being on the planet is finally devoured by him by johan the nameless monster and only he is left in the entire world of nothingness an absurd universe with no meaning at all during the time nina was kept in the red rose mansion johan was given the picture book of the nameless monster which he continuously read when he was alone in his house the picture book of the nameless monster was written by franz bonaparte under the alias of emil scherbe this book was used by franz bonaparte Parta to brainwash the kids attending the seminars of the Red Rose Mansion. The book told the tale of a nameless monster who one day got divided into two monsters. One of the monsters went to the west while the other went towards east. The monster who went towards east always used to deal with different people asking to own their name and in return would give them power by residing inside their body. Soon the monster would grow bigger in size and would devour the person from the inside. Finally he owned the name and body of a prince named Johan and devoured everyone in the kingdom. One day Johan met the monster who went towards west and told him about the name he got. The monster from the west told him that they were completely fine with no name because that was their original identity, the nameless monsters. Soon Johan devours even his other half monster and remains completely alone in the world with a name. But now there was no one left in the world to call him by that name. What a shame because Johan was such a beautiful name. The nameless monster in the book became the the only identity of Johan in this world of deep suffering and solitude if you notice this picture book of the nameless monster can be understood as the metaphor for the life of Johan or even the other way around Johan himself wanting the book of the nameless monster to be a metaphor for his life Johan and his sister were saved by general wolf at the border and it was general wolf who gave him the name of Johan after finding that picture book with his belongings in the hospital general wolf asks Johan how do you feel to which Johan replies you will know very soon and further into the story we all know how Johan kills everyone who was related to general wolf his family his relatives and his friends making him just like him all alone in this world without anyone to even call out his name making general wolf the nameless monster why Johan did this to general wolf is still unclear maybe he wanted revenge because even general wolf like the others looked him as the monster by sensing the darkness emanating through him and giving him the name Johan from the book or because he separated him with his sister by sending him to the cruel lab experiment orphanage 511 kinderheim or maybe he just wanted to show general wolf the answer that how was he feeling at that moment after being sent to 511 kinderheim johan and the other orphans including grimmer roberto christof were subjected to brutal experiments like hypnosis and brainwashing to desensitize them completely to any emotion so that they could be molded as perfect soldiers for the government when tenma in his search for johan finds out everything about this special orphanage he initially thinks that this must be the place where johan turned into the monster because of the cruel brainwashing experiments he was subjected to but he is soon faced with the reality of the orphanage by mr hartman who recites the horrific incident when johan killed 50 children and the instructors just by manipulation and inciting chaos in the tense environment and while everyone was killing each other johan just sat on a chair and watched everyone being massacred with a wild smile on his face not even having a shred of disturbance at just an age of 10 hence hartman confirmed to tenma that it was not 511 kinderheim that made him the monster johan was a monster from the very beginning of his life now there is one theory about johan i want to discuss here which i found that it is not much discussed anywhere on the internet if you pay attention to hartman's words who was a psychologist in 511 kinderheim he says that johan was a monster from the very beginning 
thing even before he was brought to 511 kinderheim as we have already discussed earlier in this video about all the trauma that johan went through that probably made him the monster so it means that johan already became the monster before reaching 511 kinderheim the question arises here is why his sister anna or nina did not become the monster just like johan i mean if you recall the incidents nina was the one who suffered most of the trauma even more than johan she was the one who was chosen to become the monster she was the one who was abandoned by her mother for the experiment she was the one tortured in the red rose mansion she was the one who directly saw the massacre in the maria theresa hall and she too read the book of the nameless monster just as johan did but why only johan formed an identity as the nameless monster and not nina also why did johan superimpose the memories of nina as his own this doesn't seem like a normal psychological trait for a kid why only johan became such an extreme psychopath i tried finding a genuine solution to these questions but i was unable to get a satisfactory answer some people came up with the answer that maybe the extreme guilt of johan for not being able to protect his sister made him the monster or some people claiming that it was the care and love shown by franz bonaparte to nina in the red rose mansion that saved her from becoming the monster these answers though they seem reasonable are far from satisfactory my take on this question is that johan was already born susceptible to psychopathy or psychopathic disorder as we know that psychopathy is an inherited disease all the research and studies on mental disorders and psychopathy has stated this which can be found on the internet in abundance that due to some underdeveloped parts of the brain emotional regulation and impulse control may be minimized in a person recent studies have also shown that psychopathic disorders can also be genetic and it is not necessary that the parent suffers from this disease they may carry one or more genetic variants that increase their child's chance of developing psychopathy no one is born with psychopathy or any other psychological disorder but many children are definitely born susceptible to these disorders some children are born at high risk for developing psychopathy due to inherited genetic factors exposing these disordered susceptible children to severe mental trauma at a young age can have a high chance to make them psychopaths later in their lives this clip from cbs news published 8 years ago also mentions the abnormal structure of the brain in psychopaths the brains of psychopaths are built differently sections associated with behavior and emotion are actually smaller than those of the general population it may explain the personality of the psychopath These evidences led me to the fact that Johan was already born susceptible to this disease and with a high risk of developing psychotic disorder and all the trauma that he went through at a very young age severely abused and nearly brainwashed by the superiors made the disease engulf his personality and a result made him the terrifying monster this is clearly hinted by Dr Hartman in this scene when he says he was already a monster from the very beginning as Dr Hartman was a professional psychologist who researched on Johan in 5 in Kinderheim after the incident of 511 Kinderheim Johan and his sister were adopted by the Liebert family by this time Johan was already brainwashed by the researchers in Kinderheim all he remembers now is his sister and her horrible experiences from the red rose mansion superimposed as his own experiences and his identity as the nameless monster in the care of the Lieberts Johan can be seen caring for his sister which shows that deep inside his twisted mind he still has empathy left for his sister. This makes Johan's personality even more complex. Most of the viewers did not understand this part of Johan in the show. Many people thought that Johan wanted to torture Nina and even wanted to kill her. But this is completely wrong. It was also later revealed in the sequel book Another Monster that Roberto tried to kill Nina because he knew that she was Johan's weakness. As I said earlier for you, to keep in mind that most of the actions of Johan in the story revolve around Nina or has something to do consequently related to Nina. Even this time when Johan kills his foster parents the Lieberts initially people get an impression that Johan killed them apparently for no reason like he kills everyone because of his psychopathic nature but after the story progresses it is revealed that on the night before the murder happened Franz Bonaparte visited the Liebert family when both the twins were asleep he came to know about them from the news coverage that happened earlier that day for Johan this was a dire situation Franz Bonaparte was a monster for Johan who completely ruined 
ruined their lives. Fearing that the Lee birds will allow the monster Bonaparte to again take away his sister, Johan out of compulsion kills the Lee birds thinking to save his sister. After the killings, Johan was sure that now Nina would certainly find out the truth of all the murders he had committed until now. The only person whom Johan cared for in his life of nothingness would despise him and even fear him because of the monster now he had become. So for his sister to carry on living peacefully, Johan gives her the gun and asks her to shoot him right in the middle of the head and end all the existing remains of this nameless monster from this cruel world. Anna, out of fear and naivety in such a grotesque situation, shoots her brother the very next moment. This is a defining moment in the show where the author makes the audience face a very cruel scenario of reality. Does the life of a monster carry the same credibility as the life of a normal human being? Should these deeply disturbed people turned into monsters be dealt with such kind of fate in our world? Should they be forgiven for their deeds? These questions are further echoed in the whole plot right from here in the form of Dr. Tenma's perspectives, where from the very beginning he believes that every human life is equal no matter what. The beautiful writing by Urasawa makes the audience search for their answers in the actions of Dr. Tenma throughout the story. Dr. Tenma is shown as the protagonist of the story, the doctor who saved the life of Johan after he was shot by his sister. From the very beginning of the story, Dr. Tenma's character serves a major purpose for the plot apart from just uncovering the past of Johan. He is portrayed as the moral conflict against the immoral ideologies of Johan. His first actions in the plot are itself evidence of his purpose in this story, where he saves the life of a dying kid by going against his superior's order, even sacrificing his job and fiancé for the kid because he knows the value of a life and understands the gift of empathy which human beings are nourished with. He therefore is a complete contrast to the monster Johan who considers all life as nothing more than garbage in this vast universe. Dr. Tenma and the other human characters are answers to all the uncomfortable questions raised throughout the story of monster. After Johan is awakened in the hospital, he faces his final trauma before subliming completely into nihilism. A fearful rejection by Nina when he extends his hands towards her, wanting a shed of love from her sister. Many people confuse this incident by saying that Johan cries here because he was happy for being saved by Tenma and hence getting a new life. But in reality, he is crying here because he is abandoned by the only person who was left in the world for him. After this incident, Johan runs away from the hospital with his sister and further he hands his amnesia-stricken sister into the care of her new foster parents, the Fortners. He does this because he wanted his already memory-deprived sister to finally forget about him completely and all the trauma that she went through as a child so that she could finally live her life as a normal human being away from all the darkness and the monster himself. The monster divides into two. One goes towards east and the other goes towards west. The monster who went towards east devours everyone he meets until he is the only one left alone in the world. The moment Johan and Anna get separated is a perfect metaphor for this story. The monster Johan, after leaving his other half, went on to devour or kill all the people he ever meets in his life, killing all his foster parents with the help of other serial killers, killing General Wolf's entire family, manipulating innocent people to commit horrific actions, even manipulating kids for playing the rooftop game related to his ideology of nihilism, which then results in death of many children. He also kills many people with the help of his hitman Roberto. Johan wanted to confront the scenery of the doomsday he saw as a kid when he was on the brink of death. Maybe this was the reason why he tried to make a lot of wealth by organizing the infamous money laundering business and making close connections with the business tycoon Hans Schuwald. He was also making connections with the far-right Nazi nationalist leaders, maybe to gain an immense political power. Though the reason is never mentioned as to why Johan wanted money and power, but I think that he wanted to control the country of Germany as a Führer and maybe would have incited a global war across countries which mostly matches with his wish to kill every living being from this nihilistic world. But then something happens inside Schuwald's library which completely changes the plan and perspective of Johan and plays a pivotal role in the plot of the story. While strolling in the library, Johan comes across the same 
some book of the nameless monster which he used to read as a kid. This sudden interaction with a past memory triggers a psychological reaction in him at that moment. This meant that the memories which Johan lost during the brainwashing in 511 Kinderheim would have definitely flashed before him. This flash reveal of his past memories makes Johan curious to discover and investigate his erased past. Therefore, he abandons his plan of eradicating all of humanity and obtaining the scenery of doomsday and initiates a new plan of committing a perfect suicide. An extremely twisted way of erasing all his whereabouts and existence from this nihilistic and cruel world on his own terms. Many people did not understand Johan's plan of committing a perfect suicide. Why was it called a perfect suicide and what is its significance in the story? After learning about his past life which resulted a change of his plans and intentions, Johan wanted to take revenge on Franz Bonaparte, maybe for his atrocities and experiments on his sister and his mother. He achieved this by repeating the same process of the massacre he conducted in 511 Kinderheim, but this time applying it in Franz Bonaparte's hometown Ruhenheim, fueling the hatred and chaos among the people in the city showing them the darkness inside themselves and hence making them kill each other like monsters with calculated process and well laid plans johan wanted to achieve three major goals first he wanted bonaparte to suffer before killing him and make him feel how it feels like a lonely nameless monster when everyone who knew him in his life or his hometown gets killed second killing everyone related to his own past like bonaparte and the people he worked with to eradicate his complete existence from this world which will make it look like that someone like Johan never even existed just like that very famous quote by Charles Baudelaire the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist his third goal was to persuade Tenma to shoot him and make his strong belief of a dark and nihilistic world where all humans are inherently evil stand true against the optimistic beliefs of Tenma that every human being is born good and that every life is equal and meaningful achieving all these three objectives with a single stroke would have been the last perfect plan executed by Johan hence making it his perfect suicide but not everything goes according to his plans this time after the massacre of Ruhenheim and death of Bonaparte the last objective of Tenma shooting him doesn't just fail miserably but also makes Johan face some series of events that even a cold-hearted unempathetic monster like him uncomfortable his sister Anna at the very last moment forgives him for his monstrous deeds this is a very important event in the plot as all Johan ever wanted by his sister was love and forgiveness on the fateful night he killed the Liebers because of his compulsion even Anna is shown to be regretting this huge mistake mistake she did as a child maybe her love compassion and forgiveness on that night could have prevented Johan from killing so many people later in his life even Tenma at this stage was not able to shoot Johan despite putting his life on the edge in searching and killing him this sudden love compassion and forgiveness was something Johan never experienced in his life and all his beliefs about this nihilistic world started to fall apart seeing his plan not working out and desperate to die for his irredeemable deeds Johan pulls out a gun against a kid and threatens Tenma to shoot him the ending of this long climactic and extremely well written complete ruhenheim chapter ends with something very bizarre and fateful incident when a drunk man who was the father of the kid shoots johan hallucinating him as the seven headed monster many people criticized urasawa for writing such an absurd scene in the climax but the fact is that this scene plays a major role in the ending of this story these cascading and miscalculated incidents were something that johan was not prepared for at all Johan thought that he had figured out and understood the very essence of human beings but fate intercepted in his plans Johan gets shot by someone else other than Tenma and then the story comes full circle when Tenma once again saves Johan therefore Johan the monster and his ideologies gets defeated by optimistic ideologies of Tenma a brilliant metaphor signifying the victory of good over evil and love over hatred this incident shows that no matter how much the world gets anger in hatred there will always be a chance of love and forgiveness to nullify that darkness this brings us to the final part of the story as well as of this video the ending scene in the hospital which has confused most of the people around the community we have already discussed earlier in this video the scene from the past of the unwanted child which johan asks dr tenma but there are still some questions that remain unanswered in this ending like who was the real monster in the story as the last episode itself was named 
becoming the real monster. Also, what happened to Johan at the end? As the bed is shown empty when the final credits roll out, and the most confusing of them all was that scene a dream of Tenma and happened inside his head, or was it a reality? Let's answer these three questions one by one. So, if you understood the whole plot deeply, then you will find out that the real monster indicated by the author for us, the audience, is the evil present inside every human being. When that evil is provoked and persuaded to come to the surface, it engulfs that human being and turns them into a monster, making them access the extremely dark depths of sin and cruelty a human being is actually capable of committing. For Johan, the monster was Franz Bonaparte, the cruel choice of his mother, his disturbed ideology of nihilism, and finally he himself. The scene of an untidy empty bed in the end signifies that Johan became a human at the end, because the ideologies which made him the monster throughout the plot were severely challenged by the ideologies of Nina and Tenma, making him realize the other beautiful side of the world and the human nature where there was love, happiness, and forgiveness even for a monster like him. Maybe that care invoked a sense of meaning to his life and hence he went for forward to live a normal life like the others. This is the reason why an untidy bed is shown in the end, which signifies the traces of a human that was present there. The dreamlike sequence where Johan asks Tenma as to which one of the twins was the unwanted one is one of the most confusing scenes in the whole show. Was it real or was it a dream of Tenma? I think this scene happened inside Tenma's head and did not occur actually in that room. I believe that this incident of the unwanted child was told to Tenma not by Johan but actually by his mother when he visited her in southern France after the events of Ruhenheim. Tenma just happened to remember this horrific incident in front of Johan and hallucinated as though Johan was saying or remembering that incident. This is why you can notice that it is shown like an eerie and bizarre dream sequence and then Tenma suddenly gets back to his senses and Johan is shown unconscious lying on the bed. Such sequences involves even the viewers with it providing us a chance for open interpretation for the ending. In conclusion, Conclusion, I want to say that this was by far the most complex show I have ever seen in my entire life. Naoki Urasawa has so brilliantly written such a complex plot that it actually requires careful attention of the viewer to arrange the storyline after the end of the show like a detective to reveal the true objectives of the story. Monster had immense depth in its characters and extreme intricacies in its plot, which allowed this masterpiece of a show to touch and reveal the darkest truths of our society as well as our dangerous capabilities as a human being. Johan as a character is by far the most complex and twisted human shown in any media content ever. His true objectives and thought processes are scattered throughout the plot and the writer has made sure that in order to understand such an enigmatic and rare character, we must dive deep into his story with our minds open towards various perspectives. This show is not less than a heavy philosophy and a psychology class in its own. Consuming such great content by such a great writer was an Honor, and hence this video, which involved a lot of research, hard work and time, is a little tribute to this masterpiece art that Urasawa has bestowed upon this world. His art holds our hands and guides us through an untouched abyss of humanity, making us stare directly into the eyes of a monster residing inside this very abyss, where this monster doesn't just tell us his heartbreaking story, but it also shows us a truth of a lifetime.